Hello there, welcome to this video where I'll be showing you what upgrades I've done to this computer, which is an eMachines T3256. I've had this computer for about a year now. I am possibly selling this, so if the seller is watching this, hello there. So something to note is that the CD-ROM and the DVD drives have been swapped. Now, that's just my part because I did that and I forgot to switch them back. And the CD-ROM is usually just used more than the uh, disk drive, so that's probably a good move. These are both original, by the way. There's only one USB on the front. Now that can get annoying if you're just working on this and you need more than one on the front. And this power button, there was originally like a E-Machines E on here, but it fell off somewhere and I have no idea where it fell off. It just came like that. But that isn't a big deal unless you have this in your bedroom or something because this light is so bright, it will illuminate the entire room if you have this in your bedroom or something. I think it just looks better without that and it's pretty satisfying to press. There were a bunch of stickers on the front. I took them off mainly just because they would be misleading because of all the upgrades I've done to this, but I just think it looks better without the stickers. It doesn't really look as cheap without them. Uh, I left the AMD sticker on there because it still has that processor. Now something else to note is that this cover slides up to reveal an audio jack and a mic jack and also a phone number which probably doesn't work right now but all that information right there. The front is still pretty scratched up, that's just the way it came, but I'm sure it shouldn't be a big deal because this will just be on the floor most of its life. Not unless you're carefully inspecting it will you really notice these. Now if you get this computer and it doesn't turn on for some reason, here is the solution. So this power supply is an aftermarket power supply and it's got a switch. So if it doesn't turn on, just make sure that switch is turned on so then the computer can get power. But also, make sure you're pressing the power button in all the way, because sometimes it won't turn on if you press the power button like halfway in or something. And here are all your standard ports that come with computers from this time. And here is all of the aftermarket stuff I've put onto it. This is a uh, Wi-Fi card and that's a graphics card, in which I shall explain further once when I take off the cover. To take off the cover is pretty easy, you just gotta unscrew two screws, which are pretty large. I'll just hand tighten them so then you don't need to use an actual screwdriver. First one's up there, second one's down here. And then you just pull it off, which does take quite a bit of a pull, but once when you get it off... Yeah, there we go. Now also, uh, the metal and stuff was pretty scratched up when I got it, so I decided to re-spray paint it. Shouldn't be a big deal though, I mean it still kind of has the texture. Here's the inside. Uh, the graphics card is a NVIDIA G4 6200, which is dandy. There's the Wi-Fi card, a TP-Link. Windows XP says it does 130 megabytes a second, but the box says it does 300, so I'm not exactly sure which one it does. Either way, that's a lot of speed, and I'm sure it'll be enough, but just so you know, TP-Link is generally a good company, so that's why I went with them. Still has the original processor, an AMD Athlon 3200+, plus, 1.1 gigahertz. Now, there is a 2.2 gigahertz model, which I think you should really go for, but I just stuck with the 1.1 because I tried to give it the 2.2, but it just doesn't work for whatever reason. I'm not sure if the processor is broken or not, or if it's just the BIOS. I think this would be a lot better of a deal if you got the 2.2 GHz model. Uh, power supplies, 400 watts should be plenty of power for everything. Uh, it does come with SATA, so in case you ever want to uh, put a chip on here that converts IDE to SATA, you got power for that. Speaking of IDE, here's the hard drive. It's a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar SE16, which means that it's fast and it's big. I think I probably put too much storage on here, honestly. It's a good hard drive, it's fast. I've got it set up weird, so I've got 10 gigabytes of space allocated to Windows XP, and then 490 is just empty. Now I did that because I just wanted to make it easier for you to install a separate operating system from Windows XP, but Windows XP is still there, it's just independent. And you can store stuff on the other 490 gigabytes. It's just like the 10 is allocated to Windows XP. 
So like, don't freak out if you open Windows XP and it only says you've got 10 gigabytes of space because you actually have the other 490. It'll just appear as another hard drive. All the drivers required are preloaded, so you won't need to install anything. It's just ready to run right out of the box. So hopefully you won't have any problems with running it. Here is everything that'll come with the computer. You get an S video cord, just cause you can. It's five feet long and it came with a graphics card, so I thought, why not? A six foot long power cable, which is in new condition. I've never used it before. It's still tied up. That's the original tie. You get this DVI-I to VGA adapter. So then you can run dual VGA monitors. So it just screws on to there, just like that. So then you can have dual VGA monitors. Now, something else to note is that if you have a S-Video monitor, you can't run three monitors at once. I figured that out myself. It shouldn't be too big of a problem because I don't know why you would use three monitors on this computer anyway. You also get the instruction manual to the Wi-Fi card. It's pretty thin, but should just you shouldn't have to use this. It should just work right out of the box. You get the instruction manual of the power supply, all the information. We do have the 400 watt, not the 520 watt, just remember that. And a Spanish version of the power supply, so yeah. So I shall go inside and fire this up and show you what it's capable of doing. Just in case you don't have any experience with graphics cards, just plug in the cord down here and not up there where the motherboard graphics are. And also something else to note is that these Wi-Fi antennas do get kind of annoying if you're trying to plug in video. So I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it has to be because the AGP slot is up there and not down there. So just to refresh you, you got to make sure that you press the button all the way in and not just halfway in like that. So all the way in and then it should turn on. Now it is a loud computer. It's probably about 60 decibels. It does have two fans in it excluding the power supply fan. It did run Windows Vista, but XP is on here now. I had to uninstall Vista because something got messed up with the hard drive, but now it's running XP and it should run soon. <laughs> That's funny. That's the uh, end of support message. This is also XP Service Pack 3, so it's the latest version for those of you who wish to have Windows XP, but Vista does run on here, so just know that. Proof that the CD drives work. Something else to note about the computer is that uh, the processor doesn't support SSE2 support, which basically means you can't really run any modern applications, including Google Chrome, so you're stuck with Internet Explorer as your main browser. But hopefully you won't be doing too much internet work on here because the processor really doesn't cope well with the internet. Here is an example, trying to load YouTube's home web page. Oh, that worked. Alright, let's try and watch a video. Alright, let's just try and watch this video. Now you would think that the graphics card would do this well, but the processor doesn't. See, like, it hasn't even loaded any of the thumbnails, it's still trying to render the video. It's just... It's not cut out for this. And trying to scroll is also another thing. See, it's not scrolling either. Oh, well, it does when I not use the mouse, but... This is, it's normally not this fast, actually. It, you normally can't even scroll. Something strange about this computer is that the more you use it, the better it gets. But maybe later you'll probably be able to watch videos on here, but I'm, I just, I'm not sure how that works. But... It's just the way it is. Windows XP is also sadly somewhat corrupted. Now I think this is due to the fact because I used a Dell installation disk, which is actually right here. And obviously this is not a Dell computer, that's a uh, e-machine, so maybe some of the Dell stuff interfered with it. So for instance, Windows XP safe mode doesn't work, it just gets stuck on this one file. And Windows installer doesn't really work either, so you can't really install stuff on here. I mean, it's probably due for a fresh install on a uh, actual CD, or you can put Linux on here if you want. With my extra 490 gigabytes of space, here are the shutdown times. Keep in mind, nothing is loaded on here. Boom. So that was just a quick demo just to show that it works and 
it works pretty well apart from those slight Windows XP problems. These are the original parts that came from the computer in which I upgraded. The RAM, it's 512 megabytes in total. It's DDR1 at 400 megahertz. I'll be selling this separately, not with the computer, but with like on a separate listing. It's probably gonna be about five to seven dollars. I'm not exactly sure yet. And then this is the driver's DVD that I forgot to mention that comes with the computer. This is to the graphics card, Windows XP compatible and Vista. Comes with fraps. So in case you wanna do, in case you wanna record the screen or something, there you go. I really hope that you get as much use out of this computer as you can if you buy it. But if you're just watching this for entertainment, then thanks for watching. But yeah, bye.